This is part two of two of mine and Jason's presentation on evidence by Isaac Asimov. Uh, our topic is the fear of technology, and we're going to argue that Asimov's position is that this hostility towards science and technology is unjustified. So like a rough outline of what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to talk about the fear of science in general, as we spoke about in class. Then I'm going to talk about the hostility towards technology in evidence. Then I'm going to talk about how Asimov shows that this hostility is unjustified, that technology is not just okay, but can amount to great things and be beneficial for humankind. I'm also going to sprinkle in some connections with stories we talked about in class. So yeah, in class, uh, we spoke about how science was not always viewed positively, even though its purpose is human progress. So we talked about this, this mainly um, with Chaucer's Yeoman's Tale, when we talk about alchemy. So alchemy was seen as unnatural. Uh, it was against God's wishes to seek knowledge. And so alchemy was deemed illegal by the church. Alchemists had to go into hiding, use incomprehensible language, and live in the shadows. So alchemy was seen as this mysterious, blasphemous practice um, performed by criminals. So science's bad rep likely stemmed from that. So in evidence, um, robots represent technology. Uh, and robots are very unnatural. Like, when humans create robots, they're, they're sort of creating life instead of God creating life. So creating robots is kind of like playing God. So, you know, if you thought alchemy was blasphemous, this is, this is kind of step up from that. So that leads us into the fundamentalists. One way Asimov shows the hostility towards robots is through the fundamentalists. Now, it says uh, on page 225 that the fundamentalists give pretense to no formal religion. However, this word pretense kind of indicates that they do actually associate with religion. And also, when I look on the internet, what the definition of fundamentalist is, um, I got that they are conservative people who follow the religious movement of fundamentalism. Uh, basically, they take the Bible very seriously. So Asimov is associating the fundamentalists with the, this close-minded religious mentality. So, yeah, I think kind of like the religious institutions when we were talking about alchemy. So yeah, the fundamentalists, uh, they go crazy when they find out Barley's a robot. They, they, they create this mob, which kind of gave me this like Salem witch trial sort of vibe. That's on page 233. And on 225, it's explicitly stated that they detest robots and anyone who makes them. So fundamentalists, they don't like robots. Also, everyone save Dr. Calvin is disturbed when they f when they're confronted with the res with the with the possibility that Byerly is a robot. On page two eleven, Lanning denies the possibility, red right in the face as usual. Uh, Quinn goes on a witch hunt for the whole story, trying to take Adam Byerly down. And on page 238, uh, the last page, the reporter stares on in horror when Dr. Calvin tells him that Byerly is a robot. So there's a thing against robots and evidence. All right, so now we're going to, yeah, we're going to get into it and um, talk about, well, now that we've established that people fear and hate robots and evidence, we're going to show now how Asimov how Asimov shows that this fear and hate is not only unfounded, but ridiculous in Asimov's eyes. 
So, yeah, first off, um, Alamab is constantly conveying that robots aren't bad, but beneficial for humanity. Right off the bat on the first page, page 206, um, it stated that robots caused the earth to be divided from nations um, and divided into regions, which, quote, stabilized our economy and brought what amounts to a golden age golden age this is this is strong bold language um clearly asmob is very optimistic about robots and technology kind of reminds me of francis bacon in the new atlantis um asimov presents presents this sort of utopia this golden age brought about by robots or by technology and Asimov uh, and sorry Francis Bacon similarly presents this utopia brought about by the practice of science so yeah Asimov saying robots bring about a utopia so another major way Asimov shows that robots are good is the rules of robotics so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna state the rules of robotics but uh, on page 221, Dr. Calvin says that the rules of robotics are based on the essential guiding principles of a good many of the world's ethical systems. So robots are created with to, be, to behave how humans think is the best way to behave. And Dr. Calvin goes on. She says that Byerly may be a robot and may simply be a very good man. So Asimov's stating here that robots are not just, they shouldn't just be accepted, but they represent uh, the ideal member of society. And I mean, he says it again. Well, Dr. Calvin says it again two, uh, two pages later. She says, you can't differentiate, differentiate between a robot and the very best of humans. So he's he repeats it and repeats it, kind of like Francis Bacon constantly repeating that, um, you know, science aligns itself with, with religion. Francis Bacon is saying that constantly that science aligns itself with God's wishes, while um, while Asimov is saying how technology or robots aligns itself with humanity's wishes. All right, next. Uh, yeah, I find it really funny when um, Asimov starts attacking people. Uh, he starts off with a fundamentalist on page 225. He calls them simple lifers who want the good old days when the people who lived in the good old days probably just wanted the good older days. So yeah, he's making fun of traditionalists and... Um, and yeah, they and then they also say, um, Asimov says that they think robot manufacturers spawn armed guards and prepare for war. And so he's also making fun of conspiracy theorists. And my favorite line in the story is when Byerly is giving the speech, uh, his candidate speech, and this supposedly random guy from the fundamentalist mob uh, goes up to him and says, do, 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 do. Hit me. You say you're not a robot. Prove it. You can't hit a human, you monster. So this is a this is an in-your-face contradiction. Um he's, this guy's calling Byerly a monster for not hurting him. I think this is a blatant showcase on Asimov's part. Like, he's showing us how ridiculous it sounds to call technology evil when its entire purpose is to help us. And then and then he says it again, this guy, uh, two lines later, almost. You can't hit me, you won't hit me. You're not a human, you're a monster, a make-believe man. So Asimov, he's, he says it again. He's going over the top with this. He's He's showing us, like, look, you... The fact that you think technology is evil for no reason at all, like you sound like an idiot. You sound you sound like this guy who makes no sense. 
So Asimov's criticizing people who see who see technology as evil without any reason. And then there's Byerly himself, who is clearly a robot. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna really get into it, but like John is at a cottage for two months. It takes two months to build a robot. On page 218, Byerly Byerly calls John family, but Byerly just told Quinn that John was some random, just some teacher. A anyways, we're not, <laughs> I mean, we kind of got into it, but we're not going to get into it because it's, it's going to take too long. Point is, Byerly is a robot. Uh, yeah, so on page 234, like, I, I liked how Byerly was speaking slowly, unemotionally, kind of playing into the robot stereotypes. I mean, it's Byerly building up to his big reveal that he's not a robot, but I think it's also Asimov playing with our preconceived notions of robots and sort of challenging them. So yeah, I'm gonna, so now Byerly, I'm gonna talk about Byerly versus Quinn for a sec. Uh, Byerly is a robot, Quinn is a human. Quinn is presented as this dirty politician who breaks the law and gets other people to do his dirty work for him. So yeah, this is shown when Quinn sends the cop Haraway to uh, take an illegal x-ray of Byerly without his knowledge. And so, yeah, Quinn, the human, is not a very good guy. And I think he's a foil to Byerly, who is a great guy slash robot. Byerly follows the laws. He always plays the bigger man. He's clever. Uh, he outplays Quinn and he's compassionate behind closed doors as we see with his behavior with John. Um, he's very gentle and compassionate towards John. Calls him family. And not only, not only is Barley a good human, he, human slash robot, he's also presented as the ideal person to lead. Um, so Dr. Calvin argues that robots make great leaders because they are incapable of harming humans, of tyranny, of corruption, of stupidity, or of prejudice. That's on page 237. So not only is Byerly a great human, but he's a great leader. He, yeah, he... It says that he becomes a great mayor, that he's world coordinator at least for two terms. And yeah, robots represent the ideal human beings and they can really amount to great things as Byerly did. So speaking of Dr. Calvin, she's very pro-robot. She's constantly defending them. Um, I think the biggest indication that she believes in robots is when at uh, the end of the story, she tells people that Byerly is a human when she knows that he's not. I mean, she goes to Byerly at the end of the story and basically tells him, I know you're a robot. But despite that, she writes an article saying that he's human. And I think this is really because she really believes that Byerly as a robot can be a great leader and really be um, the saving grace of humanity. So yeah, there's that. And at the end of the story, when the reporter is perturbed, disturbed that Byerly is a robot, Calvin, Dr. Calvin tells him, you share a prejudice against robots that is quite unreasoning. The significant word here is share. She doesn't say you have a prejudice, she says you share a prejudice, meaning that many people see robots negatively for no reason. So yeah, this is this is Asimov's argument, nice and wrapped up. Um, 
Many people fear and hate technology based on feeling and not any solid reasoning, and thus refuse to see that technology can amount to great things, as it did with Byerly. So, yeah, Asimov is telling us that technology can be really beneficial to us, and he's telling us to let it be beneficial by not, by not rejecting it, by to ignore our gut reaction of science is bad. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of wanted to like compare and contrast evidence and uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I mean, they, they, the stories are great parallels to each other. Both show uh, creator creation relationships. Um, but while evidence and while in evidence, the creation helped humanity in Frankenstein, it went on a murderous rampage and really didn't help humanity. So why? Why why did Barley turn out so great and the creature in Frankenstein turn out so poorly? Well, if we look at Barley and John's relationship, the creator-creation relationship, there's compassion, there's caring, Barley calls John a family, John doesn't curse Byerly, doesn't call him a demon every time he sees him, doesn't abandon him. And they really, John takes the time to form a strong bond. Whereas Victor does the complete opposite. He's horrified by his teacher, uh, teacher, creature, and um, shuns him, calls him a demon, etc. Also, another major difference is that Byerly looks human and... The creature does not. Barley can be empathize, empathize with um, and can be accepted by humanity. In fact, when people think that he's not human, they, they're not accepting of him at all. They, they make a mob. Like they, they only accept him when they think he's human. The creature doesn't have this luxury of being able to pass on, pass, pass on, be, being able to pass as a human. He, he's ugly. He looks like a monster. And so he can't really form an emotional bond. His ugliness prevents this, as we spoke about in class. So in summary, the creature was hated by everyone and Barley was eventually loved by everyone. So I think Mary Shelley's showing what would happen um, when people react poorly to new technology and Asimov's showing what would happen if you react well to new technology. I mean, people didn't really react well, but they did after they thought he was human. So yeah, they're both showing, Mary Shelley is showing the negative mentality and the consequence is that technology does harm. Asimov's showing the positive mentality and that the consequence is that the technology does good. So we can, by contrasting these, we can expand Asimov's argument and say that not only do people have an unreasoning negative gut reaction to technological advancements, but that this prejudice could be a reason problems surrounding technology arise. What I'm saying is how technology impacts the world depends on how the world receives it. Victor and everyone else rejected the creature, and so it did harm. John and humankind all accepted Byerly, and so... Barley did good and became a great leader, which is probably what Victor would have wanted for his creature. Yeah, so that's it. Let us uh, let us keep an open mind for our own sakes, and maybe technology could do us some good. Thank you.